Welcome to this podcast about hydrocarbon reactions. It's um, supposed to go along with Experiment 66 um, and hopefully it will explain to you a bit about what went on in that experiment. Um, it's also good if you missed that experiment so you didn't see what results we got. Anyway, in this experiment um, we were looking at the reactions of hydrocarbons, so alkanes, alkenes and aromatic compounds and we're seeing how they reacted with two different substances, bromine and potassium manganate. We'll also have a quick look at what we mean by combustion reactions at the end of this film. Okay, so hopefully by the end you'll know what a substitution reaction is and how it's different to an addition reaction. You'll be able to write equations for when hydrocarbons actually take part in substitution and addition reactions. You'll have a feel for why bromine is such a useful substance if you want to find out if a substance has got a double bond on, in it or not. And you'll be able to write equations for combustion reactions. Okay, so we'll start off having a look at the cyclohexane reactions. Here's a um, diagram of cyclohexane. And um, these were the two results we got with cyclohexane when we reacted it with bromine water in the dark. And you can see that pretty much not an awful lot happened. Okay, so cyclohexane wasn't able to react with bromine in the dark. What about if you try it in the light? Well, now you've got something, sunlight, which is able to break your bromine molecules apart and make them much more reactive. And you can see that now our bromine water went from orange to colourless, which suggests there was definitely a reaction happening. Okay, and something called a substitution reaction. And when we write our equation for it, we'll see why it's called that. But what's basically happening here is that one of these hydrogens on our cyclohexane ring is going to get swapped for a bromine atom. Okay, so if we start with our formula for cyclohexane, C6H12, and we add bromine to it, one of our bromine atoms is just going to literally swap or substitute with one of these hydrogens. So we'll have one less hydrogen in the molecule, C6H11, and there'll be a Br in it. And what's left over is the bromine molecule with a hydrogen atom instead of one of the bromines. Okay, so we've basically just taken one of those hydrogens and swapped it for a bromine. That's what's happened here. So substitution because one of the atoms swapped. And alkanes can substitute with bromine water. So remember that. That's a key point from this reaction. that Alkanes can only substitute with bromine water. Now here's an alkene reacting with bromine water, so cyclohexene, and you can see that cyclohexene has a double bond, and it reacts very differently. So almost as soon as we added the bromine water to it, the colour started to fade, and after the reaction had happened very quickly, there was no colour left at all, and we noticed that that reaction was happening, whether it was dark or light. Now this is a different type of reaction and it happens because of this unsaturated nature of our alkene. So because we've got this double bond here, it means things can react with it much more easily and they'll add to it rather than swapping. So what we've got here is C6H10, that's the formula of our cyclohexene. We add bromine to it and we're going to make C6H10 as well as these two BRs. So the two BRs are going to attach to the either end of this carbon-carbon double bond because we're going to break this carbon-carbon double bond. So I'll show you what that looks like after we've just written the equation. So C6H10Br2. So this time we get both bromine atoms and they literally just add to the molecule rather than swapping for stuff that was there before. Okay, so that's why it's called addition. Okay, and alkenes will do this with bromine because of this double bond of theirs. So it's a way of testing if you've got a double bond in a molecule because the molecule will quickly react with bromine and make it go colourless. 
So just to get a little bit of an idea of what this molecule would look like afterwards, we'd have a bromine there, a bromine there, and in actual fact, this carbon-carbon double bond would no longer be a double bond, but a single bond. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at the reactions of methyl benzene now. Methyl benzene, there's a model of it here, showing it's alternating double bonds and the methyl group attached to it. And we can see that when we were in the dark, not a lot of change. So the bromine water stayed its orange colour. Well, um, slight change as you can see, and that's because there was a slight change needed to this um, particular slide where there was a mistake before. So I'm just going to take you through the uh, equation for the reaction between methyl benzene and bromine water. And as you can see again, um, we've got a substitution reaction here. Okay. Um, in terms of the observations we made, it went from <coughs> a dark red, it lost that dark red colour, that it faded away, so that showed that the bromine water was reacting, but it would only happen in sunlight. So this is characteristic of a substitution reaction, and what's going to happen is that one of these hydrogens is going to swap for a bromine atom. So we're starting with this molecule, which is C7H8, and we're adding bromine to it. And as before, with the alkane, so methyl benzene is reacting like an alkane and not an alkene, so we're not adding to one of these double bonds here, we're actually substituting. So one of the bromine atoms swaps for one of the hydrogens, and we get C7H7Br and the leftover HBr. Okay, so a substitution reaction happens there, not an addition, which is what we'd expect from an alkene. We'd expect one of these double bonds to open up and the bromine, both bromine atoms to add to it, but uh, benzene compounds or aromatic compounds, key point to remember about them, they don't react like alkenes, they react like alkanes. Okay, moving on. We've got cyclohexane with potassium permanganate and we can be quite quick here there was no reaction going on there. Okay, so alkanes don't react with potassium permanganate. Moving on to an alkene, and here we can see that that purple color we can see there, that's gone. So that definitely reacted with the potassium permanganate. Now, writing an equation here is a bit difficult. So I'm just gonna show you the product that forms, and we're not gonna worry about writing equations for this. What actually happens is that this double bond breaks, and instead of having a double bond there, we're going to have an OH there and an OH there, which is something called a diol, but don't really deal with alcohols in year 11, they come up in year 12. So, double bonds gone, diol there, so we'll end up with a molecule that has single bonds all the way around the ring, like so. Two hydrogens on every carbon, except for two of the carbons, which will have an OH as well as an H. And it doesn't matter which two carbons I choose here, because they're all equivalent. So I'm just going to put my two OHs there. What is important is that the, H, uh, the OHs are on adjacent carbons, because that's where the double bond was. So again, this is a bit of a useful test, because if we add potassium manganate, to an alkane it won't react, if we add it to an alkene it does, it decolorizes and it shows us the presence of, the, the presence of that double bond. Methyl benzene, another quick one, purple at the start, purple at the end, no reaction. So I suppose the take home message from this practical was the fact that the alkenes are very reactive, they'll take part in addition reactions with bromine and they'll be oxidized quite easily by potassium manganate, but the alkanes won't react easily at all, and nor will aromatic compounds. Last thing for this um, podcast is uh, combustion reactions, and in combustion we're just writing equations for a reaction with oxygen, so this shouldn't be too hard, this is just writing balanced equations. All we really need to remember is that we're going to form carbon dioxide and water 
if we put enough oxygen in. So let's just write the equation CO2 and H2O and it'll be reacting it with oxygen because it's burning or combustion. We've got six carbons so we can make six carbon dioxides, 12 hydrogens so we can make six waters because water's got two hydrogens. 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 1 is 6, add those together that makes 18, get my maths right, so that's 9 O2s. If we do it with cyclohexene, C6H10, doesn't matter whether we've got an alkane or an alkene, we're always going to form these hydrocarbon combustion products, carbon dioxide and water. And now let's just balance it again. We've got six carbons, so six carbon dioxides. Ten hydrogens this time, so we can only make five waters. Twelve plus five is seventeen, so we need eight and a half oxygens. Or you could double that to get rid of the half number, so you'd have two, seventeen, twelve, and ten. And then finally, toluene, which we decided was C7H8. It's a hydrocarbon, so it's going to form carbon dioxide and water when we burn it. The fact that we're burning it means we've got to have oxygen in the equation, and writing the equation is just a matter of balancing it. So seven carbons, so seven carbon dioxides, eight hydrogens, so four waters, seven twos are 14, four ones are four, add those together, you've got 18 again, so 902s needed. All right, so that's combustion reactions, which weren't in the practical, but which you do have to be able to write equations for.